So up until this point in the class, you've worked with linear equations, with quadratic equations, some even some logarithmic things. Um, so the last set you're going to work with are exponential equations. So exponential equations are ones that have uh, your variable that you're solving for in the power uh, somewhere in the problem. So there's a couple different ways you can solve this depending on the type of problem that it is. So one type is just going to be if you have uh, an exponential equation equal to a particular number. So let's just give you an example here. If we have 2 to the x equals 7. Now what you always want to think here is, well, will this be a whole number? In this case it would be no, because 2 to the 2, if x was 2, 2 squared is 4, <coughs> but 2 to the 3 would be 8. So obviously this is not going to work out to be a whole number, but to figure out exactly what it is, you have to do the reverse operation of a power because you can't have the x be in the exponent. So remember that if something's multiplied, you always divide it when you're solving an algebra. When something's added, you subtract it. You always do the inverse. So the inverse of exponentiation is by doing the log. And since we have a base 2, it would make the most sense to do log base 2. So what you do is you do log base 2 of both sides of the equation. Log base 2 of 2 to the x is just x and we would get log base 2 of 7. Log base 2 of 7 is some number that should be between 2 and 3, but it, you wouldn't have to know exactly what it is. You could figure that out on a calculator. By the change of base formula, you could switch this to something like ln 7 over ln 2 um, as well. So another type of equation is where you want to change all the exponential terms in the equation to have the same base. So let's say we had something like this. Uh, let's say 2 to the x times 4 to the x equals 16 to the x. Uh, let's make that minus 2. Okay. So what you want to notice here is you can't use any of your standard rules for logs or exponents because we have different bases. So you want to convert everything to be the same base. So 2 cannot be converted to any other base. However, 4 is the same thing as 2 squared. So instead of 4 to the x, we could write 2 squared to the x. Similarly with 16, 16 is 2 to the 4th. So what we've done here is we've made everything a base 2. Now we can use some of our exponential rules. If we have something that's raised to a power, raised to another power, that just becomes multiplication. So this is times 2 to the 2x. Over here we get 2 to the 4 times x minus 2. It's important that that needs to be in parentheses. The 4 is times this entire power. Lastly, we need to get each side to be one term. Here we have 2 to some power times 2 to another power. Remember that if you multiply with the same base, you add the exponents. So x plus 2x would be 3x. And I'll distribute this before we get 4x minus 8. You can see here, now both sides are just 2 to some power. So for, this, for both sides of this equation to be equal, obviously, just the powers need to be equal and you can disregard the bases here. So if you solve that now by subtracting 3x and adding 8, you'll get that x is equal to 8. So in exponential equations, if you see multiple exponential terms, usually you want to try to get those to the same base if possible. If you can't, or if the problem only has one exponential term, you're always just going to take the log uh, of whichever base seems most convenient in the problem. Remember that even if you took, for example, the log base 2 of you know, 3 to the x power, that doesn't cancel it out because our base is not the same as the base of our exponential term. However, remember that by your logarithm rules, which we have all of those in another video, the power can still come to the front. So you'll get x times log base 2 of 3, and now you can do division or whatever you would need to do to solve for x. So even if it's not the exact base that cancels it out perfectly, it still brings the x down to the front 
which is what we want because now you can solve for it by using your regular algebra terms. So that's the tips for solving exponential equations.